This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University, and today I want to talk about Monero's big fat problem. This video is a follow-up to yesterday's video about ASIC resistance, which encountered quite a bit of criticism on Twitter and on some of the Monero boards, and I do want to respond to some of that criticism. Monero, I would admit, definitely has better privacy guarantees at the base layer than Bitcoin, but what Monero advocates will never tell you, at what cost does it have this? The cost is blockchain bloat, which is a real threat to de decentralization of nodes on the Monero network. And we can see this by taking a look at the relative market cap of Bitcoin to Monero. As of this recording, Bitcoin's market cap was 545 billion. Monero's market cap was 2.8 billion. And the reason I'm using market cap is because it's a pretty good measurement of the reach and value of a network or protocol. For liquidly traded cryptocurrencies, market cap, I think, is more reliable than looking at transaction volume, which can be faked. It's much more difficult to fake price and hence market cap, assuming your cryptocurrency is liquid and it's not one of those that has 100 trillion units and it just trades once at a dollar and then has a $100 trillion market cap. But if it's liquid, market cap is a reasonably good measurement. Now, the size of the Bitcoin blockchain is 539 gigs, size of the Monero blockchain 110 gigs. You can see where I'm going with this. Bitcoin has a market cap that's 195 times bigger than Monero. In other words, the value of the protocol and its reach. But Bitcoin's blockchain size is only five times bigger than Monero. So this shows you the problem. What do you think would happen to Monero's blockchain size if it ever really caught on as a cryptocurrency? Blockchain bloat would appear to be a real problem simply because, and we've talked about this with many times with reference to BSV and Bcash and some of the failed hard forks of Bitcoin, the larger the blockchain size, the more difficult it becomes to download the blockchain. It becomes a bandwidth issue as well as a storage issue storing the full blockchain on your node. And the problem with a really large blockchain is this prices out people in developing countries it means that only relatively wealthy people in developed nations can afford the hardware and the internet bandwidth to run full nodes. The problem with Monero is the ring signatures, code, and the other privacy tech, which is otherwise very cool, but this would seem to be what's causing the bloat of the Monero, the Monero blockchain. And again, we can see the size of it uh, relative to Bitcoin's blockchain when Bitcoin has already achieved much wider adoption. So ring signatures, other privacy tech seems to be causing this blockchain bloat, and it'll just get worse if Monero is ever widely adopted. In engineering and in life, there are always trade-offs. And so don't let anyone tell you that their crypto is better than Bitcoin and comes with a free lunch. Monero does come with better on-chain privacy benefits, but the, at, at the expense and at the cost of blockchain bloat. There's no such thing as a free lunch in economics or in cryptocurrencies. There are only engineering trade-offs, and this is very important to remember. I'll link in the description notes below to the monthly blockchain growth of Monero so you can see where it's accelerated, where it's slowed down, and where it is today. Now, I'd just say if you're finding this video helpful and you want to help support my channel and its mission of global Bitcoin education, I just ask you to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, leave a comment. Now, I would say the best thing that's happened to Monero so far is actually, and paradoxically, that it hasn't been very successful. Its current market cap is roughly equivalent to the maker of Slush Puppies and Daddy Ray's Fruit Bars. We're talking about uh, the market cap. For, so for XMR, it's approximately 2.8 billion. This is the same as the market cap of J&J &J Snack Foods, which has a market cap of 2.86, 2.87 billion and JJ Snack Foods is the maker of Super Pretzel, Soft Pretzels, Funnel Cake Factory, Funnel Cakes, and as we said, uh, Slush Puppies as well. So what would happen if Monero actually caught on? We'd have huge blockchain bloat and resulting loss of decentralization among those running nodes. Right now, Monero is no bigger or more important than a snack food company. But if it were to grow, we would see incredible blockchain bloat. And if Monero ever became a real threat, someone might notice and actually start to attack it too. And I think this is one reason it hasn't really been attacked so far. There are a couple of great comments in yesterday's video that I want to highlight. The first one from SPX730, Monero willingly making network vulnerable to cloud computing attack. Companies have more conventional computing power than users. Good job. He's referring to Monero moving to this proof of work algorithm called Random X, which only works on CPUs. And this is what I discussed in yesterday's video, which you can go rewatch if you haven't seen it. 
or watch if you haven't seen it, where it's very important for a cryptocurrency to make it past the ASIC horizon and eventually be secured by ASICs, which themselves then become commodified. If you stick around at the CPU level, there are a lot of risks to that simply because CPUs are very widely available. As I point out in my response to SBX 730, it's much easier to rent an army of CPUs than ASICs if you're an attacker. And then I thought Paul Lam 1100 had an excellent response, which I want to blow up and print in full here. So this is from Paul Lam. If Monero were to become much more widely adopted, you would start to see existing data centers directing their spare compute to mining, and then eventually facilities dedicated to CPU mining popping up in locations with access to lower subsidized energy costs. And then, of course, Elizabeth Warren would start to get mad at this point. And ultimately, you would start to see those mining facilities running specifically manufactured CPUs that were optimized for random X. This is what I was talking about yesterday. A lot of the Mon Monero community misunderstood, saying that somehow an ASIC could be designed. But what I was said specifically was specialized hardware. You can always come up with something specialized to, uh, they can do it better than uh, the, the general form of the hardware. So in this case, you'd see mining facilities running spe specially manufactured CPUs that were optimized for Monero's proof of work algorithm, with it, which is random X, such as higher core counts at the cost of everything else, as Paul Lamb is saying here. Home PC mining would not be able to compete and would ultimately only make up a fraction of the overall hash rate. In the big picture, it isn't the miners that require the maximum distribution possible for decentralization, but the full node operators. And I agree with this. This is what Bitcoin does so well, having full nodes all around the world, not prune nodes, not nodes run by corporations like Infura for Ethereum, but actual regular Bitcoiners defending their currency uh, and verifying the rules by running running a full node. And this is what doesn't become is no longer possible, will be no longer possible for Monero if it ever catches on, because its blockchain will be too big and you won't be able to you won't have the bandwidth to download it in parts of the global south and even parts of the global north. He goes on to point out the exercise of Monero's blockchain, a trade-off made for its privacy advantage, as we spoke about earlier in this video, were it to reach Bitcoin's current volumes would be prohibitive to the latter, to the full node operator. So I think this is a really clever quote and said things much better than even I could. One of the highlights of yesterday's video was being attacked by Howard Chu, who's one of the creators and developers of Random X. Very smart guy, seems like a nice guy actually. He did call me a moron. I responded, I very well I very well might be a moron, Howard. Thank you. I have a lot of respect for the Monero community and its commitment to privacy. And that was not meant ironically. I do respect that I think privacy is much more important than your average Bitcoiner uh, would lead you to believe. I responded to I went on to respond to Howard saying, so maybe you can enlighten me how Monero has greater security guarantees than Bitcoin. Isn't it easier to rent an army of CPUs than an army of ASICs? And Howard responded, in fact, it's so easy to rent more CPUs that the Monero community can do so if needed. I responded like a moron, of course. Monero community is probably not wealthy enough to do this to stop a real attack. Monero market cap is only 2.7 billion. I guess that I would guess that attackers' budgets will be bigger than that. Howard responded, if that were true, would the use of ASICs change the equation of all at all? And I responded, yes, because even if you have $100 billion, it's not easy to assemble an army of ASICs. Most of them are in the hands of ideological Bitcoiners or companies who don't want to break their own machines. In other words, are economically incentivized not to break their own machines by attacking Bitcoin and causing the full nodes and the developers to do a hard fork and replace SHA-256. By contrast, CPUs are everywhere. And then there's a piece that Howard actually ended up deleting, which I thought was sad because it was the most honest piece, where he responded to that by saying the Monero, this is basically my paraphrase, I should have taken a screenshot of it. Howard said, the Monero community has lots of CPUs lying around in their basements that they could bring online to defend the network, which of course is true. We all have old laptops or old phones, etc. My response to him was Monero community is small relative to potential attackers. Attackers, if you're gonna make this argument that Howard's making, attackers certainly have even more CPUs lying around to up the attack on network if the Monero community digs their CPUs out of their basements and tries to defend the network. And Howard, I can't remember his example, exact answer, but he basically said, I don't know, I don't have a good answer for that. But the fact remains that Monero has not been attacked yet. And I think this is this is the reason it hasn't been attacked yet is it's just so small. It's the size of a snack food 
company. So that was, I thought that was another interesting part of our discussion that I wanted to highlight. And I'm sorry that Howard uh, found the need to delete it because he seems like an otherwise upright guy. And again, I don't want to go too hard on the Monero community. I have a lot of respect for them. They tend to be a pretty, pretty high IQ bunch focused on privacy, etc. I think they should make the same move that Seth for privacy, as I alluded to his blog in yesterday's video. I'd love to see these guys come over and work on Bitcoin as Seth is doing now, because Bitcoin really has the network effects. Bitcoin has a lead. And uh, unfortunately, I think Monero is going to continue to depreciate against Bitcoin. Unlike Monero, Bitcoin's base layer prioritizes security. We've made it past the, the ASIC horizon, as I discussed in yesterday's video, rather than still being reliant on CPUs. Base layer prioritizes decentralization by making sure to avoid blockchain bloat. After 13 years and all this activity and adoption, we're still only whatever it was, 545 gigs. Simplicity at the base layer. This is another nice thing about Bitcoin. It's very simple at the base layer, as you would expect base layer money to do. It's not a mess. It's not completely complicated and a, uh, a complete rat's nest like Ethereum is. The, the fact remains that there's no crypto with privacy at the base layer that doesn't suffer from blockchain bloat and other problems. And I think privacy is something that can be solved in higher layers. It's already can be solved by buying non-KYC Bitcoin and also by using things like CoinJoin and pay join and these are things that make more sense rather than bloating your blockchain with privacy features at the base layer and this is something that zcash um, suffers from as well uh, this is a jameson lop tweet from october 2022 somebody's having fun spamming the zcash blockchain and tripling its size to over 100 gigs rough estimate is that this attack is costing them about ten dollars a day in transaction fees well since october of last year this has gotten even worse Zcash's blockchain bloat is now up to 250 gigs, so roughly half the size of Bitcoin's blockchain, in spite of the fact that Zcash only has a, a market cap of 800, 800 million and very, very little trading volume, $26 million uh, worth of trading volume every, every, every day. Here's an article I found from Binance trying to justify the spam. Zcash may be getting spammed, but the blockchain is doing just fine. The company behind it says, this is a great example of lowering the veil here and pointing out how Zcash itself is a corporate coin. It may have some nice privacy features, but unfortunately it has a company behind it, unlike Bitcoin, which has no company behind it. The name of the company behind it is actually based, based in Denver as well. Uh, it's called Electric Coin. They have employees. They have a headquarters, it looks like. They have investors, etc. And they also have a founder's reward where they're paying their founders, investors, employees, and advisors from the mine. It looks like they don't have a pre-mine, but 10% of the minor reward goes to the stakeholders in the Zcash company, Electric Coin Company, the founders, investors, employees, and advisors. This is a problem. This is a problem under the Howey test as well. And this is one reason I would not expect Zcash to stick around very long in the US. As this article points out, as we've talked about many times, every crypto project must reckon with the SEC's Howey test. And if you're paying your founders and investors and employees from the mine, this is a problem, especially if you are an actual corporation in the US that's issued this coin. So these are the problems with privacy coins. They're either uh, fairly, fairly neutral, as Monero appears to be, uh, definitely much more decentralized than Zcash, but both of them seem to have problems with blockchain bloat. In the case of Zcash, it's probably some engineering problem and has led people to be able to, to spam it and increase the blockchain a, a huge amount. But e even, even without that, this is really a non-starter because it is backed by a corporation and that is a problem for neutrality, even if your coin is private. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.